All right, everybody, welcome back to Weld.com. So today we're going to do a little bit more flux core. We've been doing some flux core in previous videos, and today we're going to go a little bit more in depth with it on thin gauge sheet metals. We're going to be running some Select 701. Uh, it's a T11 wire, and it's good for materials up to about half inch thickness. Anything uh, more than that, you have to do some preheating, so that's some additional steps. So in that case, you can just change your wire uh, to get to that thicker material. But we're going to go ahead, we're going to run on some, some uh, cold rolled carbon steel, eighth inch coupons we got from Weld Metals Online. We're going to be running on the ESA 235 IC. Uh, let's go ahead and talk settings. All right, so we're going to be running about 140 inches a minute and 17 volts. And because this is a self-shielded wire, we're going to be running on DC negative or straight polarity. Okay, same thing. Okay, so the gun is hooked up to the negative terminal, and then my workpiece clamp is going to be hooked up to the positive side. All right, so a lot of people think just because it's flux core that it's not good on thin gauge material. So like I said, we have some eighth inch material here. It's sheet metal, it's thin gauge. Uh, you can actually get down to 14 gauge, sometimes even less with this stuff. I used to do a lot of handrails. It was like inch and a half schedule 40 and inch and a half schedule 80. And this is exactly what we would use out in the field. Today I'm going to run an 045 diameter wire, which seems a bit excessive, but it's actually not. T11 is great for sheet metal, so it's kind of built for it. Jumping up to an 045 wire, I'm going to get more weld deposition. I'm going to get faster travel rates than I would with an 035 wire. Uh, so with these given settings that we have here, we're going to be pushing about 136 amps, but our travel, our travel speed is going to just be a little bit quicker. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to start off with an eighth inch lap joint, and then we'll go ahead and do a T joint right after that. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hold the wire at about a 45 degree angle, and that'll be my work angle, and a 10 degree travel angle. So because there's slag, you're going to drag. So I'm going to weld from left to right because I'm right handed, and I'm just going to do a slow steady drag right down the material. You'll be able to see that I'm not blowing through the material, so a lot of people think because of the penetration that you would get with flux core that you're going to blow right through this stuff. It's just not the case with this wire. Obviously, if I had like a T6 or a T8 wire, I'd be blowing holes in it all day. But with this T11 wire, it actually runs really good on thin gauge material. It's what it's designed for. So we'll just keep going through. Once we get it done, we'll go ahead and get it cleaned up, take a look at it. All right, so. While this would be a good situation to use short circuit MIG on because you know you get good penetration with short circuit MIG on thinner materials, this is a wire that's designed for the field. We're in the shop today, obviously, but you know just to kind of give you guys some practical use for this type of wire, it's typically used out in the field um, where it's not necessarily easy to drag around a full-size machine and a bottle and all that. So you can actually use smaller machines or the small suitcases that you can run off of uh, you know engine drive machines. That's when this stuff would be used. It's not practical to take, you know, a bottle of 7525 mix or any other gas bottle and run it, you know, 50, 60 feet up in the air so you can do handrails and uh, stair attachments and things of that nature. So the flux core is designed for outdoor use. Another thing you want to be cognizant of is fume extraction. So as you can see in the video, we're using at the source fume extraction. If you don't have that, make sure you're outside. You know, you got good wind conditions. You know, put a small fan on you, or you know, possibly use a respirator or a papper system. There's, this stuff generates a lot of smoke. You don't want to be breathing that in. Let's go ahead and move on to a T-joint. All right, so again, you know, because this is the first pass on the T-joint, we're going to go ahead and point in at a 45-degree work angle, 10 to 15-degree travel angle, and just do a slow, steady pull. Just watch it. You're not going to blow through this stuff. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's a good running wire. It's running pretty smooth right now. Uh, just keep going through. I mean, it's just uh, pictured almost as if it's a small stick welding electrode. I mean, because that's essentially what flux core is. It's a welding rod kind of sucked inside out. Flux is on the inside, the metal coating is on the outside of the wire. And just work through the joint just like you would. Watch your puddle, you know, maintain the appropriate weld size and judge your travel speed off of that. All right, so today we're just cleaning everything off one of these furred wire wheels. I prefer to use a wire wheel anytime I'm dealing with flux core. Uh, just for the fact that the, the slag comes off relatively easy and I don't have to sit there and pick at it with a chipping hammer and then hit it with a wire brush. You can just hit it with a wire wheel and uh, just take care of two steps in one. So it's definitely a time saver. So that's pretty much your T-joint. As you can see, there's, I don't have any burn through on the back side. I've got my tacks from where I had that earlier, but there's no burn through. So you don't have to worry about punching through to the back. Weld turned out pretty decent overall. Um, and like I said, you know, it's, it's a good running wire for, you know, for sheet metal. So if you guys have sheet metal projects, you're working on the old beater car or fixing something up, it's, this is a good place for that wire. Uh, same thing with, uh, like I said before, stairs, handrails. I used to do 14 gauge stair pans 
that would get filled with concrete with this same exact wire, 045 diameter and everything. Uh, just roll up to the job site, weld in the stair pans with that, and it was, it was really easy to uh, maneuver you know, everywhere I needed to go and, and do what I needed to do. And the results were really good with it too. So I, I enjoy welding flux cord, it's something I like doing. Uh, so hope you found this video educational and informative. Um, if you guys have any questions about the type, this type of wire, this type of application, go ahead and drop them in the comments section. Until next time, make every weld better than your last.